In this video, I'd like to offer a number of causal relationship examples to sort of reinforce the concepts that were presented in the previous video. It's from my own experience, there's a difficulty initially getting started, or at least there was for me, and it, and it went on for years. Uh, fortunately, I finally got over it, but I, I had this blank page syndrome. The worst thing I could do is be faced with a blank page because I really wanted to start in the right place and get it right. And because I had a blank page and I was really trying to figure out where to start, uh, it sort of precluded me from starting. And because I wasn't starting, I still had a blank piece of paper. And it was sort of a vicious reinforcing loop to, that got me nowhere. Uh, fortunately, I got over this after a while and realized that it actually doesn't make any difference where you start. You simply start somewhere and develop something and based upon developing something you learn something and you can develop some more something and and it can be actually a very um, very rewarding process that you enjoy doing because you're learning in the process so um, my advice to you is that don't, you shouldn't expect it to be a well-defined orderly process um, I like to say just just do it think Nike um, and approach it as a trial and learning endeavor where you do something and you do something else and in doing that you learn something and then you realize that what you did really could have been or really should have been different so you tear it all up and throw it away and start over again and though in time by thinking about the relationships you sort out what what makes sense and when it comes together, as I said before, in one of the one of the presentations that you you develop this set of relationships in the in the hopes that it promotes understanding. And when you finally get it figured out and it comes together right, there's an insight that just, or sometimes multiple insights that show up from the set of relationships that you put together. It represents an aha moment, and you develop. You develop all of them in the same way. It's And it's a very simple approach in terms of you only have to ask two questions. You, you can start anywhere. And if I start with schedule gap, the question I ask is, what influences the schedule gap? Well, the, the given deadline and the current expected completion date influence the schedule gap. And then I ask, well, what does the schedule gap end up influencing? Well, there's an option for working overtime, though, and working overtime increases the labor quantity, which should reduce the expected completion time. And if I walk this loop, it's a, there's one um, opposite relationship in it, so it's a balancing loop. And then I ask myself, okay, what does overtime influence? And I find out that overtime, prolonged overtime, actually leads to fatigue, and fatigue reduces the labor quantity and labor labor productivity labor productivity should improve the expected completion date but since labor productivity is going down the completion date is getting later so this particular loop when i walk it it has two opposite influences in it so it's a reinforcing loop and then i ask myself well what what else could be influenced by schedule gap and I say that I could go ahead and add resources, which would add to the labor quantity, which would then reduce the completion date and reduce the schedule gap so that here I have another balancing loop. And I continue to ask this question, well, resources will have a negative impact on labor productivity because the new resources will have to be brought up to date and therefore reducing the labor productivity extends the expected completion date which makes the schedule gap worse so that by adding additional resources things get worse before they get better and this is the way that you continue to to sort of ferret out the meaningful relationships but you only have two questions to ask you ask what does this influence and what influences it and you continue on an ongoing basis and you if there is a question about whether what you've identified is relevant or not, 
you put it in the diagram. It's easier to put it in the diagram and take it out later if you determine that it's not relevant than it is to remember that you had thought about this and taken it out and now you have to go find it and put it back in. And when I put things in the diagram, well, when I consider certain aspects and decide that they're not relevant, I keep a list of not relevance and why they're not relevant because if I want, if I think about it later, uh, if someone else asks a question, I should be able to say, oh, I considered that and it's not relevant for this reason. And if I take things out of the model because I've decided they're not relevant, I put them in the not relevant list so that it indicates that I had, in fact, actually taken them into consideration and decided they're not relevant. And from time to time, I end up going back and looking at my not relevant list and deciding that there's an item in there that is actually relevant, so I put it back in, in the model. So I continue to ask this question over and over again about what does this influence and what influences it until I get to a point of having sort of ferreted out the, the model to the extent of what I can think about. And then, though I'm not sure that, that what I've developed is, is sufficiently complete, so what I do is I go find somebody else to, to explain the model to, not with the intent of trying to impress them with how smart I am, more with the intent of hoping that they will ask questions that I didn't think to ask, so that based upon their questions, I can actually continue to improve the model. And I may have to do that with several people or a group of people. But the intent is to, to figure out what all of the relevant relationships are that come into play with the current situation that I'm trying to figure out how to deal with. And and once I do that, I have, I have a better sense of what my options are and the implications of those options. So where we typically get in trouble is we end up with, we start with the situation, the schedule gap, which is a result of the deadline and the expected completion date. And we say, oh, well, we can work overtime and that'll take care of the problem. Though realizing that we can work overtime is sort of the extent of the consideration that that's taken. And as a result, by not thinking about all of the other implications, we end up becoming victims of the thought that we don't do because all of the other relationships are there and come into play whether we think about them or not. So it's better to spend time and and look at the implications for the implications for the implications. Think about it similar to the way that some people know what chess is. Some people know how the pieces are supposed to move. Some people play chess and they sort of play what the position is and, and where they can move. And some people think about, well, if I move this, my opponent will move this, and then I'll move this, and then they'll move that. And and some people who have thought of, played the game for a long time and become very good at it play dozens of moves ahead. Ferreting out all of the relevant relationships is actually playing multiple moves ahead in terms of here's the situation. If I take this action, here are the implications of that action and the implications and the implications. And I continue to do that until I'm relatively confident I have identified those components which are have an influence on the current situation. So um, continue to do that. I've provided uh, a half a dozen other models in the external resources section that you can access and walk through the unfolding to get a sense of, of how this happens in a number of different environments. So I uh, hope you found this informative, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.